everyone, I'm the Herping Kid and welcome to our journey where we explore snakes, their relatives and the world's growing passion for these magnificent creatures. Now today we will be discussing types of movement in snakes. It's quite a lot more complicated than one would think. There are four primary types of snake movement. The one you're probably thinking of right now is the serpentine motion, the S motion that a lot of snakes do actually display, but it's not all snakes, believe it or not. Before we do discuss the types of move movement in snakes, we do need to discuss why they can move without actually having legs. Snakes have plenty of specialized features that allow them to, goodness, to move along their stomach on the ground without legs. Um, the first and probably one of the most important uh, is actually the flexible bones. Now, if you think of a human bone, if I were to put too much stress on my femur or tibia, it would snap in half. However, a snake bone can actually flex quite a bit more than ours can. Don't ask me for what the reason is. I don't know, but um, if you do really want to know, comment down below. I will do some research, research and I will try to get back to you. But um, then snakes in between the ribs, which is their main bone in their body, besides their vertebrae, uh, they have muscle. In every subsection of the rib, they have muscle. And this muscle allows them to locomote across the ground without having legs. Now, the most interesting and probably unexpected feature is that snakes are able to alter the positioning of their scales so that they can change friction levels on whatever surface they're climbing or moving along. Um, this allows them to even climb up vertical uh, vertical surfaces such as walls. If you haven't seen a snake climb up a wall, I highly recommend googling it because it is so interesting and so cool. But they, they alter it and then the friction changes and then they can move along pretty much any surface. It's so cool. Now we get into the types of movement in snakes. First off we'll talk about the concertina method or concertina movement. Uh, con the concertina movement is very similar to an accordion, you know, you push it in and you stretch it out, push in, stretch out. For all the accordion players, which I doubt I have many uh, in my viewership, but doesn't matter. For all the accordion players, I know it's not that simple, don't worry. But that sort of basic thought of movement is how these snakes move, the snakes that make use of this, which isn't that many because it takes a lot of effort for not much movement. Um, but basically, they brace their tails, so they make a, a sort of swirly shape in their tails and then they push their head out forward and bring in their tails. So here's their tail and here's their head. Then they push their head out forward and bring in the tail push the head out forward and bring in the tail. It's very cool, but as I said, not very effective for quite a lot of energy output. So it's not used by an awful lot of snakes. So next we have the side winding movement. Now this type of movement is my personal favorite type of movement because these snakes, it's just extraordinarily unique and it's just the best, but they, throw the front bit of their body forward like they they curve their body sort of in very abstract sort of curves and then with those curves they throw those curves forward first the front bit of their body then the back bit of their body then the front bit again the back bit and they do it so quick and it's just the best if you haven't seen it please do google it it's it's just the best uh, i know i said that so many times already but it is absolutely extraordinary google side winding snakes and you'll have a good laugh next we have the rectilinear movement this movement is actually one of the 
more scarce movements that not an awful lot of snakes use but it is also one that not a lot of people know about this rectilinear movement uh, entails that snakes are moving like millipedes or centipedes so they're walking on their ribs it's it's crazy it, it is um but um they pretty much move in a straight line until they want to turn if they turn they just turn and then continue moving in a straight line it's extraordinary they use their ribs there as legs it's something else um do google it if you haven't seen it i know i've been saying this a lot but please do it's quite interesting now for our last type of movement is the very stereotypical serpentine movement this movement is like this it's moving in an s shape with, with their heads leading and going from side to side and their body follows uh, this type of movement is typical in snakes but it's not as extreme. The curves aren't as extreme as you would think. It's not like this, it's more like this. Very, very slight curves, unless they're trying to get away from danger, in which case they're going like this because they need to move very quickly and they can't be super precise with their movements. So they move very quickly. This movement does have its downsides, such as it's not very good at locomoting on smooth surfaces such as tiles for instance uh, but in terms of rough surfaces like grass or gravel it's excellent they can move very quickly and effectively now uh, this movement is utilized by a lot of snakes such as the mambas black mambas or cobras a lot of different types of cobras use them as well and yeah, most lapids use this type of movement. Hit that like button if you enjoyed and consider subscribing for more snake and animal content every Monday and Friday. And I will see you next time.